Everybody, this is Zena Escovito. We are filming Bay Legends. We have a podcast. We're going to be on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. I'm with my co-host Simon Russell and Randy Gallerin over yes, there. Yes, ma'am. I'm yes, here. and we are taping in Oakland. And they figured that they were going to put on the show because they said that there's so many legends that come out of Oakland. <coughs> yes. Uh, we have, you know, the Pointer Sisters. Uh, MC Hammer, I mean Tower Power, everybody. And we Santana. also have mm. for our guest, which I'm really excited, it is my brother, Juan Escovito. What's up? What's yeah. up? Yeah. Yeah. The J is in the, the house. The J is in the house. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah, yes, breaking yes, it yes. in. He's there it breaking is. it in. We're going to get down to some serious questions yes. with the J. That's I it. actually had to do research on you because there was so oh. much stuff. I know. There's, there's actually certain things that I didn't even know about you. Well, there's things that I know I forgot about during the <laughs> years. When you're 61, you can't remember everything you've done. But hopefully uh, your research <laughs> turned out really good. I actually have a list of all the people you play with, and I don't even think that you know how many people he, who he's played with. Do you, Randy? No, Do you know I how don't. many people? No, no. <clears throat> I don't either. Okay, I'm a ha I have my little, my little notes right here. Good. But Okay, I'm going to – how many people do you think that you played with? About, like a number. 300? <laughs> uh, no, it's a little less than that. But Really? <laughs> Are we talking tour or just gigs? Yeah. I think both like recording. Well, I don't know. Maybe. Well, there's a lot of things I've done that's not in the public's eyes, so they don't know. That's true. That's so true. Yeah. That's true. So I'm going to name some. <clears throat> so the first one that I have, of course, is Prince, Patti LaBelle, Jody Watley, Tony, 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 who's from here, yep. MC Hammer, Lionel Richie, Freddie Hubbard, Barry White, Herbie Hancock, mm. Terry Lynn Carrington, mm. Bobby McFerrin, I remember that one, wow. Tito Puente, Rafael Sadiq, Bobby Womack, Sheila E., and Pete Escovito, and Peter Michael Escovito, of course, our family. That's it. That's wow. a lot of people. That That's like some that serious people. So where do we begin? I don't even know. What do you want to talk about? Me? Yeah. Myself? Yeah. That's why I'm here. <laughs> That's right. Well, go ahead, Jay. Let's talk about, you know, what what is it like? What is the po most powerful group? I was thinking about this on the way down. Like, what is the most, like, being on stage, what was the most, like, you ever felt playing with a band? I know, like, Pops with the big band, with the horns. I mean, that's got to be powerful. But, like, you play with Prince in the, uh, with the horns, and what's, I mean, what is it? <clears throat> well, the thing is, you mean when I thought maybe when I thought I made it, right? Yeah. Because the family, you know, when I first started playing, uh, everybody always asked us, um, did Pops, you know, wanted us to be percussion players or musicians. But the thing was he did not want us to be musicians. Wow. So he, um, he used to, you know, practice in the front room and, and we'll see all the instruments and stuff. And then he'll take a little break or something and, we're just like these congas are here. Like this was our table. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> this is on another table, another drum, another right. bass, guitars, or whatever. And, all through and the house. All through the house. Yep. So, you know, your kids and you're running around, you're beating. My son does the same thing. Yeah. Just beating on stuff. Yep. And all of a sudden, uh, we just, you know, it was just fun. So after a while, we just playing together. We start, uh, Sheila, my brother, and Zeno, well, she wasn't born then when we were smaller. Right. So we're just jamming and playing, and we started just coming up with rhythms and playing, and eventually, you know, Pops would go on tour, do his thing. So he would lock up all the, his equipment in, in the closet, <laughs> and he would say, you know, nobody touch my stuff. This is how I make my money, right? Like you don't big touch lazy boy, like, don't, like <laughs> Pops got the chair. Like, don't sit in my chair. Don't sit in my right. chair. Don't, don't touch my, my instruments. Right. So, of course, me. I'm from East Oakland. <laughs> I'm going to pop that lock. I'm going to figure oh a way. Get and you're like, what, six? Already, already breaking and entering? Uh -oh. Right. 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 I can dig that. So, so I'm like, you know, when, somebody, when your parents say, don't do that, what are you going to do? You're going to do it. You're going to do it. <laughs> so I'm like, man, this is a good lock he put on here. How, how am I going to get in there? 
I'm trying. You know, you watch TV and you see how people pick locks and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You so you just learned how by yourself? By TV, television. What kind of exactly. friends did he so have? So you got in. I ve- eventually, I tried <laughs> screwdrivers, take the, you know, the doorknob. The crowbars. Crowbars. I tried, you know, a hammer. Right. Am- not MC. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so anyway, I got and something. And then he stops to get the laugh, with it, and it didn't come. That's right, the funny right, part. Right, right, So I picked, because I'm used, so used to laughs. Right. So I picked when the you're naked, we'll insert those. When you're naked. We'll insert those. Wow, that's going to be okay. a long day. Sorry, go ahead. So I picked the lock. I get in. <laughs> that drum said, one, you know, beat on me. That's what I heard. Right. The drum said, one, beat on me. Yeah, it talk. It did. It does. <laughs> it does. So I took the drum. I beat on it. Yeah. Started playing. So then, we, you know, we get into our rooms. I'm playing, I think, bongos at first. Uh, Sheila's in the other room playing drums. My brother doing something else or whatever, probably painting. <laughs> but anyway, so we start to play, and eventually we said, "Man, we're getting pretty good after years of doing this." Sure. So we put a little band together and start started playing. Added, you know, somebody in the neighborhood, bass player, guitar, whatever. Right. Do you remember what the name of that band was? Because you guys, all I remember, <coughs> what you you were wearing scrubs, weren't you? Like medical scrubs. Oh, that was later. Yeah. Oh. Because then you know when you start playing and you see Earth, Wind, and Fire, all these bands playing, they have the same matching outfits. Right. They look sharp. They, yep. Man, that's a group when you're wearing right. the play, same thing. Yeah. So we knew somebody had worked in a hospital. <laughs> they have the scrubs. Wow. So we go. That might be cool, <laughs> right? So you stole from that after picking the lock. Now, yeah. who would think Scrubs would be cool to <laughs> right, wear on, right. on a stage? So what was the name of the band? Scrubs. Scrubs. No, I don't know. <laughs> I can't oh, remember I knew, what I it knew. was. I knew that was coming, but, you know. <laughs> hey, so, so. so Wait, so, let me finish my story. Uh, well, you know, go ahead, boy. Okay. So. <laughs> it's all yours. We, we're matching. We're putting those. They're free. The lady, well, I'm not going to say her name. Oh, you almost did. She took the scrubs from her job at the <laughs> hospital and right. trying to, you know, help help the cause, which is broke Mex- Mexicans trying to put their <laughs> first band together. Wow. They didn't have GoFundMe back then, so we had our we outfits on. It. We thought we was it, too. Yeah. <laughs> we started doing steps. We were gro- grooving. We're playing. We're like, it was choreographed, so, too. So let yeah. me ask you this. It was, has Pop seen you do this yet, or is he still... Yeah. Oh, he was, okay, so he's already knowing that you guys are already playing and got a band by now. Well, in the beginning, no, but right. eventually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, he was like, because then we end up rehearsing in, in the front room. Right. And he's like, you know, what are you guys doing? <laughs> well, Pops, we've been playing for years. Right, <laughs> he, right. He just, you know, somebody, my brother, picked the lock and <laughs> took your equipment out, so we started playing. And first thing he goes, I know it was you, Juan, because I, you know, I get tr- in trouble for everything. So hey, you're the oldest. I can't even blame it on my Sheila's brother. Sheila's the oldest, actually. Oh, yeah, Sheila. Yeah, well, let's oldest, make that the clear. Oldest, the oldest boy. True. Yeah. So we're jamming, and, and he said, "Well, this is what you guys want to do." So then he started showing us the proper way of playing and the correct way of, you know, doing things. So then, uh, yeah, we started playing in the neighborhood, and then all of a sudden, you know. People paying us to do uh, some shows, and we're like, this is pretty cool. You know, people's houses, backyard, whatever. First, we're working for food, you know, tacos. <laughs> um, pizza. They're like pizza. Hey. Chicken pizza. wings. Chicken wings. Chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> so, some, so, some. so we started getting paid, and we're like, this is fun. And then, uh, so that's where it started. And then uh, and then Zena got a little older, and she was were you playing back then oh, a little no, bit? No, I never played. I never wanted to. I, it was too oh. loud. Yeah, it was loud. but And annoying. Yeah. it. But it was fun. You know, we just, you <laughs> know, yeah, kids course. having fun and yeah. getting paid. And that's where it started. Then, But then you started meeting people because we're so loud in the neighborhood. We Right. I don't know how many houses we got kicked out of because the music's so loud. Sure. Mm-hmm. But it's cool because, you know, we had a big window. So while we're playing and jamming, you see people in the neighborhood walking by, and they would stop and look in the window, and you start to see them grooving, <laughs> right. dancing. Yep. We're like, man, let's play louder. <laughs> you know, Make sure <laughs> they can really hear us. Get that two and four, let them hear that, that groove. <laughs> wow. So they're listening. We're like, and so people started 
eventually coming in the house, some musicians, hey, can I sit in? Can we play? And we have friendships now today that mm-hmm. people that used to come over now have True. gold albums. Right. You know, hey, that's and, Oakland. And so, like, yeah. I always hear that story, <clears throat> like, all these different people, like, that used to live near you guys that became, you know, from going and hearing you guys and, like, the whole bands would, like, come up and show up and hear you guys. Yes. And yeah. um, who, can you mention some of the people that were around back then? Uh, let me see. There's so many. I'm trying to think. There was... Uh, there well, was George Duke, Santana. There yeah, was, Santana um, used to come by and hang out, uh, you know, Tito Point. There. But there was wow. a lot of musicians that were traveling traveling and coming in Oakland to do concerts. Right. And they knew my father, of, of course. course. Mm-hmm. So they would come over and jam with us or show us the proper way. So wow. that's where our learning nice. experience came from. Yep. Really good uh, musicians. Uh, Bill Summers, for one, that taught us a lot of percussion yeah. stuff. Yeah, Bill Summers we, was over the house. We don't a mention lot. a lot, but True. good. Well, let's mention. Him. Yeah, Bill Summers. Uh, he did Roots. Yeah. You know that uh, oh, he's series. Oh, a big legend. Yeah. For sure. Yes. He and then he got his album together. Uh, Bill Summers and Summer Heat. Yep. And you know uh, Clay Tovin and Larry Patisse and all that. Ray Obiedo, sure. Ray all of them. Everybody was over the house. Yeah. yeah. So you know, you just started to meet better musicians because you're getting better. Yeah. You're playing at a, another level, better musicians. You're starting to, uh, the money's getting bigger, <laughs> which is nice. Yeah. So now we're not wearing scrubs. We're wearing suits, player. You yeah. know, we're going out hard now. <laughs> right, right. You know. And the, so, and the band's growing, and, and, and now you're adding horns, and, and, it's, and it's jazz, Latin, funk. What oh, else? man, I hated jazz. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I couldn't understand. You know, when you're young, you can't understand jazz. Yeah, that's true. It's moving all over, and the, right. the beat's all over, and you're yeah. trying to play it one, two, three, four. <laughs> yeah, They're going, yeah. tum, da, 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 da. like, what is this? Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like Japanese. Yeah. But um, <laughs> eventually I learned Japanese. Yeah. <clears throat> it's just learning song, though, <laughs> in different styles. I mean, you know, yeah. basically. Yeah. Because I, I grew up, I, I, I didn't even know how to play rock. For two years, I only knew how to play jazz standard because of my. Father. You know how now, rock? Uh, I know. I'm still trying to work that out. Is it is it uh, three and a half beats <laughs> to the bar? Or? That's pretty close. Oh, that's what it is. There's four, and that's why I've been getting fired because I keep dropping that half beat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There you go. I yeah. to, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, that's it. Now I wanted to see because I was writing this down last night, and there's so many things that I still like don't know because I was the youngest child, and there's a lot of things that I missed. But besides music, like, did you ever have a regular job? Oh, yeah. Great question. Yeah, because I don't remember. All I remember is drums and and everything. So what were, yeah, so what were the regular jobs that you had? Okay, I used to work at Word of Pants in San Francisco. So I would go down there and, you know, like again, from East Oakland, had that gang, that uh, mentality of, you know, confidence and just making things happen. Right. So taking what's yours? Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot behind that sentence. Hey, Could now, you like tell? When, like when you said the drum set called you, was uh, merchandise calling you at that time too? I didn't steal in that store except once, and I got caught. <laughs> he probably stole the whole store at once is what right, he means. No. Right. So anyway, <laughs> I'm working at World of Pants. They're selling clothes, and somebody would come in wanting a pair of shirt, a shirt, a pair of shirt, a shirt or pants or whatever. I get them over to where the suits are. They leave with a whole suit. Nice. The manager's like, what's going on? Kept happening. And they said, you know what? We have all these stores, but we never, like, you're really a good salesman. We're going to keep you over there where the suits are. Just stay there because that's where the money was. Right. And I said, what about all this other stuff? You're so good. Just stay there. So they were walking around, and I one or two suits. I, I was selling like this, right? And then one time there's a lady, because wore the pants, they, the pants wasn't him. They was, you know, they were long, and then mm-hmm. you get them uh, tapered upstairs from this lady, sewed up, right? <laughs> right, right. So one time the cops came and, and <laughs> handcuffed the girl, the lady, and she left. And so people coming back buying suits, and they had, it wasn't tapered. So they said, anybody know how to sew? <laughs> I said, <laughs> because there was $2 a ham, you know. <laughs> So I'm like, and I went up there a couple of times. I've seen her sew. It looks like you pressed 
the pedal and the, the sewing machine does the work. Wow. I said, man, I, $2 a ham and I'm making three now, whatever it was. I'm going to double <laughs> wow. my money. So I'm, I'm up there and they're bringing all these pants and stuff. And I'm going, that, the pants, was, <laughs> they're like this, homie. They were like, and I said, that looks good, man. <laughs> man. Because they look in the mirror and they say, what's wrong with my pants? I said, man, I can, like I'll curtains. fix it. I'll fix it. But I like <laughs> curtains. They were tore up, but I got that two dollars every time. So I said, I got to get a little. They come with those metal clips too. <laughs> <laughs> those things that we always used to poke our fingers on. So I said, yeah. I got to, I got to get better at this. Cause this yeah, is, yeah. I'm gonna get fired, right? So then I started getting better, better. So then they go, okay, it's a little crooked. I said, man, your leg. I would say I blame <laughs> it on his leg or his shoes, you know, but they're pretty close and to me. Yeah. And so <laughs> they were leaving with suits and all of a sudden all these people started coming back, <laughs> lining up the pant, the hams came off. Oh all, man. They go, man, who is up there? <laughs> ones running down. Where and was that? Where was this at? In the city? Or? Uh, in San Francisco uh, on Market uh, Street. Uh, no, wait a second. Now, uh, what, did you work? Because I know a bunch <laughs> of you guys. I know Pete and uh, Paul Green. Richard, yeah, was it Paul Richard Green? Brown yeah, but they were at another store. Right, but that was a was it Nunbush or something? Well, uh, no, oh, no, not Nunbush. But what was that store they all used to sell shoes at? Kevin, I, oh, I cannot remember. Too. And that no, wasn't it was that a shoe store. Mall? Yeah. yeah, at the mall. That was Imamo. Imamo. Yeah, right. But yeah, I, I try to, you know, that's the hustle in Oakland. You right, just gotta right. try to get paid. So, but uh, I got, but I end up quitting because, you know, because you went had to b- play a gig. Well, yeah, and they I, might, they probably didn't want you anymore. Well, I still, well, I went back to the suits. Cause they, <laughs> they said, you know, she's getting out soon, so she'll be, <laughs> she'll be back up there. I said, that's fine. I'll go back to the suits. <laughs> right, right. But I still have the, I, I would go home with all, you know, $2 of, all day for t- 10 hours. Oh, Man, and they probably uh, at the time probably paid you cash, yeah, right? They it you was $2 cash. Because they didn't have I had a stack like this. Or... I was rolling. Right. <laughs> Get it, you know, my, uh, I would bundle them up and put them, you know, put them away. And so how old were you <laughs> at this point? Uh, 17, 16. Wow. And, and you were you got, sewing. You, you, you guys took Bart out there? Did they yeah, have Bart there? Yeah. Well, yeah, Bart. Wow. Yeah. Or the bus that yeah. went over the bridge. Wow. Yeah. Well, that was one of my jobs. <laughs> yeah. And that was probably the last one. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I'm kind of still thinking like when you were playing, when you got into playing and like got out of the Bay Area, who was your first tour that you actually, I mean, I, you obviously toured with Pops, but I mean, that was always kind of going on growing up. Mm-hmm. But like, who was the first band that you actually went and toured with? I think the big, I think the big one, well, the first big the one first was one. Sheila. Oh, I think right. was, uh, yeah, the Glamorous Life or, yeah. Mm-hmm. But we were touring with, you know, Pops and other musicians here, but not, like you're saying, a big tour or nothing. Right, right. But yeah, we, uh, Sheila, actually, when her and Prince wrote Glamorous Life, she did a, she did the song without a band. It was just her and Prince playing everything. Wow. So Prince said, well, you need a video. So w- she was going to do a video. She said, well, I don't even have a band member. So she called, got her brothers, me, and Zeno was on it on guitar. Right. Yeah, but I, I had to audition. Did you have to audition or no, you just I got the gig? Mu- I was a musician. See, so, no love. Just no love for the baby of the family. Well, you, you had but to you rehearse. All, you were on the video, though, so. I'm telling yeah. you. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. So we did the video. And then, uh, oh, so I was working, I was doing landscaping, right? Okay. At that time. So, so the, 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 the video comes out, Glamorous Life. And I'm going back to my job uh, working at landscaping, right? And, and painting and doing people's houses, apartments. And I see the video, I think it was MTV back then. Oh, yeah, MTV. So the Glamorous Life come on. I'm mowing the lawn, <laughs> trimming hedges. People looking at me like, is that you in that video? I said, uh, yeah. <laughs> Why are you mowing this lawn? And do, this is my job. I just did the video. And, and then I called Sheila. I said, Sheila, this ain't working out. Um, <laughs> I need to be in your band because <laughs> people are brought. I can't mow the lawn when people want my autographs. And, and I'm, I'm seriously outside hustling. And uh, so eventually I got in the band and toured with her. 
Wow. And for but Chris, did it, but did the grass look <clears throat> like the same as the hymns that you were doing in Oakland? Oh, the same because were they crooked? Because I've passed a couple lawns and I see that it looks like a hill, but it's supposed <clears throat> to be straight. Right. And I right. think my brother actually did that one. Right. Well, sometimes if, if there was a sign that said uh, "landscaping by J E," it probably <laughs> was. <laughs> but it depends what look you're going for. You know, if you're going for something crooked, thank you. Right. It was there. You know. All right. So when you were out on tour with your sister, how was she to work for now that she's the boss and she's got it the was, record deal? Uh, we got time for this? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well. She was, in the beginning, it was really hard because she loved, she would want everything perfect. So we actually. Sorry, one thing. Just lower your mic just so I can, yeah, so everybody can see. Okay, cool. So okay. at first, we would, you know, we'd listen to the song, we'd rehearse the song, and then we went to the studio and it was all mirrors. So we would work on the dance steps. I'm talking 10, 11, 12 hours non-stop dancing right, just dancing right. for months yep and then rehearsing for months so that part was hard after you know mowing the lawn and then dancing and practicing all day right um but once we we got so tight it's like yeah you go to sleep at night you're you're seeing your part and everything and yeah. what's good about the mirror you can see what everybody else is doing yeah and how it came together but when, man, when it was tight and then we got on stage and, and Prince came to our rehearsal, he was like, he did, you know, he was quiet. He just sat there and, you know, had his shades on. He's just right. looking. He's going. And I'm thinking, did, does he like it or not? Because <laughs> right, he, right. he wouldn't move. Right. And then he'll just leave. Wow. And she go, man, he loved it. I go, yeah, really? Man, he came, did he fly? He flew into Oakland or, or where were you guys rehearsing at this time? Well. SIR? Uh, yes. San Francisco. SIR. Yeah, and then, that's right. Yeah. Then we went to Minneapolis. So we wow. went to his studio and we heard, well, then L.A. and Minneapolis back and forth. But then we, we were rehearsing at the big Coliseum in Minneapolis wow. where, where they were making the, the stage, the production, everything was coming together. Yeah, yeah. So we were rehearsing on the big stage. Wow, that must have been an incredible feeling uh, right mm -hmm. there. Yeah, but first you're used to a room, and now I'm on a platform. Yeah. Drums over here. Eddie M on sax way over here. Yeah. So now we had to change everything because now I have to jump off the stage. I have to go over here. I have to go to Sheila. Mm -hmm. I have to jump over here with, with Steph on guitar or Betty yeah. on bass. So now it's like the timing was diff. It was off, right? Right. Because we had to be at right. the verse, chorus, bridge, stand there. So we had to uh, adjust. Right. Because then the, the light, the crew that was doing the lights had to follow us or take the lights off here, put on Sheila, then open. So now we're doing this big production. I'm right. like, this is so cool. Yeah. So it was so exciting just to see, mm -hmm. you know, what it took to do a big concert. Like we right. never, Sheila haven't done, haven't done anything like that herself. Right, mm -hmm. right. If she did, she was behind, the, you know, percussion player, not right. being in front. Right. So it was all new to all of us. Not, we're 20, 21 years old. And we're op gonna open up for Prince after the the movie came out, Purple Rain. Right. So that was our big. Wow. It's like this is crazy, and the people, and it was just so much fun. And then after we we got to really know Prince and stuff, then he had me, um, Su Susie Davis. Yeah, mm -hmm. Susie, mm -hmm. uh, Carl. No, Carl didn't play play after, but we actually he took uh, Miko Weaver mm -hmm. and Eddie M myself. We will play with Prince on the last three songs after every after we play with Sheila, right. we hang out, then we play wow. with Prince. Wow. So that's when we started like getting in his band and playing and doing uh, uh, award shows and all this with Prince. Right. He's like, Okay, I want one and then you know. So that's when we really hung out with him and it was like amazing. Wow. Yeah, it was so cool. And Sheila's <coughs> Sheila's song Glamorous Life, was it big already? Because it was all oh, yeah. the, the radio and it all of that. It was huge. So, so everybody yeah. knew the song. So you yeah. went from landscaping to making what? Like, I mean, back then, we're, we're talking, what, a couple thousand a week or something? Yeah. Wow. So what were you making landscaping? Like 150 <laughs> bucks a week? <laughs> Plus hemming. 
Plus the ham, which was no, three dollars. No, but he, he was seventeen. He was twenty. <laughs> you know, he was landscaping right before he got. The I'm gonna tell you here. what I was making. I was making five dollars an hour. Wow. I spent a dollar or two on lunch. I would have paid you six. <laughs> <laughs> really. <laughs> I would have paid you. 50 and cents. we used to take breaks and go to the bar, have a couple of beers. So I've come home with sixty dollars a day. Or back then, that was pretty good. Yeah, but what? What? <laughs> how was it when you started getting that money? It was cool because this would trip me out when Sheila said, "I said, well, I can't. I don't want to. You know, I, I don't want to leave my job because it was good money. Well, I thought it was right. And <laughs> she said, well, because I never got paid for a rehearsal. So she said, no, we're paying you for rehearsals. I'm like, what? Whoa. You get paid to rehearse? Wow. I'm like, <laughs> that's this so is, sweet. This is yeah. cool, and so we're like, man, we're getting paid and we're just rehearsing, and, right. and that was fun. That was really cool. And then you learned about per diem. Per diem. Oh yeah. That's supposed to be for food. Right. Every, but you know when you're on tour, uh, I don't cater. know. They cater to you. So send that per diem home. Mm -hmm. Well, not home. You buy well, you another know. suit. <laughs> I, yeah, that's true, because there were so many homes at that point. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want the wrong. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah, wrong, so we'll get per diem. friend to get the money. Right. Right. So now, you know, everywhere you go, people are paying for everything for you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you start to meet people with more money, people established, people already got their careers going. Yeah. They invite you out. You have, a, you know, steak, ribs, and lobster, right. and and you're it's playing on the Glamorous Life tour, playing with Prince, and then mm -hmm. there's all these other musicians from tours crashing that. So you must have met like everybody, everybody. Ev on Man, they tours. were coming to our show because, of course, Prince and then Sheila. Yeah, so backstage. So that lead to other gigs. Oh yes. <clears throat> so so after you established with uh, playing with Prince, Sheila, what came after that? Well, you start you start to meet. It doesn't happen right away. You just. Because yeah. for me, I'm thinking this is never going to end. Right. Mm. Wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're thinking, you know, your sister making it. Right. Gold, you think once you get a gold album, you're set for life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. <laughs> As you know now that, you know, you can have a gold album, make money, and then, you know, your career can go down or it goes up yeah, and down. sure. Mm -hmm. So, but I still, I was always was friendly and cool with everybody. So, you know, I established a lot of Networking. friends. Yeah, with musicians. So as soon as it ended and stuff, I was getting calls. People, man, come join this band. Come do this. Right. You know, so I, I kept working. Awesome. Like the rest of the and band. Then, That's and good. then, like, so I remember you start doing some movies, like uh, the one with. Uh, well, we did the first the comedian. One. Remember, I forgot. Uh, the Ford Fairlane. The smoke. Yeah, yeah. Was it Ford, Ford Fairlane? Fairlane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and Andrew's then, uh, Dice. Crush Groove. Yeah, Crush Groove. We so did how that. did how did that uh, Crush Groove must have been first, right? Yeah, Sheila was. Uh, um, she was in that movie. She had a good, uh, big part in there, and mm -hmm. we did that in New York, and it was with uh, New Edition. Right. Uh, back then it was uh, the LL Cool J. Yeah, LL Cool J, Fat Boy. Everybody yeah, was that in that was movie. Crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was a great movie. What was it like to be on the set with those guys? It was fun, man. They were they were they were really cool. Yeah. But the thing is, when the movie came out, Sheila rented out the Grand Lake Theater in Oakland, so just all the family and friends could come. So how come you I, know, how come I wasn't there? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I said fr family and friends. Yeah, I, I think I knew you guys then. Um, I think so I knew you guys before you got signed, but um, anyways, um, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, close friends. Right. <coughs> exactly. Love you. So, love you, too. Love you, brother. So, love you. <laughs> so, can you love imagine... You. this interview now? <laughs> <laughs> can no, you go, imagine... go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm trying to. All right. Can you imagine... So, I'm mowing the lawn. I'm watching my, myself on MTV. Now, we're doing a big tour. Prince. Whoa. Then Sheila does a movie. We go to Grand Lake Theater. I'm sitting there going, because we always go to Grand Lake when we're little. Right. So now we're like, we're going to be in a movie? This wow. is crazy. In yeah. Oakland. That's so and, cool. Yeah. Watching and we're sitting there and, and on MTV. the big screen. Yeah. yeah. TV. That was just all Man, brand it was new. Crazy. We're like, we're in a movie. You guys, yeah. You guys made history, bro. Did, you give, did you give yourself a standing ovation? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I would have. Right. Yeah. They said, uh, turn to the turn to the person on your left and give him a hug. <laughs> but it was so cool. Like when they had the shot of me, a quick shot, everybody screamed, "One, one!" Because yeah, it's all yeah, family. Yeah, yeah. So 
It was nice. It was cool. That's cool. <laughs> so you were you were ta- telling about the Crush Groove, which is crazy with all those people and everybody's vibe and everything's good. How did you guys come up with the uh, when did Ford Fairlane? Ford Fairlane? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, once we were doing a lot of, uh, like I said, we're doing, okay, Sheila did the movie. And then we're still, we, even though we're on tour with Prince on Purple Rain stuff, there, there would be some, sometimes we're off for a week or two, and Sheila would book something else. We'd go to Europe, we'd right. go to Japan, we'll film, we'll do a week there, come back. So she was always getting calls for doing award shows because she was like, you know, the gold album now. Yeah. So we are always, Sheila was always busy booking things, so I would go with her. Right. But what really tripped, uh, tripped me out is the people backstage, like, you know, they you knew. You mean that would come and visit? Oh, man, and it's like. Yeah athletes and you know magic johnson and now we're friends and right you know, he knows my name like hey juan what you don't know all these actors you owe him money i, ah. I probably did <laughs> but but to have these musicians you know now know your name that was yeah. that's the trippy part is and hey, it's not it's not mm-hmm. like just sheila it's like all the band members that eddie m they know him sure me because they would come to all the shows. Right. You see them in the front row. And like, that was a bad band. That was that band bad. was amazing. Yeah, we had a lot of energy. Uh, we're all from Oakland. Yeah, born and raised. So, yeah. you know, you become like brothers and family. You know, um, you know what trips me out, man, is I just remembered that we were all rehearsing at SIR because I was playing with your brother. He was trying to get a record deal. And right. then Santana and Chester Thompson were in the other room. Remember that? Yes. And yes. then you and then you guys were in a room. So there was like this whole there was like four groups. We all knew each other and everybody was coming in to see. And that's when I started meeting a lot of people because right. we were all there rehearsing. Yeah. They would always want to see us rehearse and come in. Yeah. And like you said, Santana was in another room and, yeah. you know, Frankie Beverly and Mays yeah. was around. And yeah. yeah. You know, all these Oakland bands and, and Sly Stone was coming to our gigs and wow. hanging out. But were you, yeah. were you ever nervous about, I mean, meeting somebody or, I mean, when they walked in the room and it was backstage, like, did your heart actually go, oh, my God, like, that's Oh, heck yeah. That's oh, yeah, the session. starstruck thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, who was that? Name, like, you know, just a couple well, people that is, you were really excited. Well, the thing is, it still happens because yeah. I really admire musicians that, not how, how many albums, albums they sell, but just who they are and what they accomplish in, in their life as a musician. Right. Because I know what it takes now to right. get that CD out, yeah. hustle. The hustle is uh, you really got to put your heart and soul and dream it and see it and make it happen. Right. You can't just, you know, do your gig and then you're you're done. You're constantly, um, as soon as you get to the gig, you're, you're still working. Right. Not because you're on stage. Even off the stage, you have to... Right, you know, that's where the work yourself. is. Right. That's yeah. where the networking is. Right, right. And I do have to say that <clears throat> even today, which is great, I mean, all the musicians like, you know, Simon and you, and, you know, I watch your videos, you know, and it's so true that what my brother is saying, that it never stops. No. And what I love about also how musicians talk about each other is that, you know, you're always going to learn something more. You're always going to learn something better. Somebody's always better than you. Yeah. You know, and that you will always learn, like, for the rest of your life. And even when I watch my brother's videos on, like, Facebook and, you know, all of that, like, he's right. constantly practicing. Right. And he'll even post videos where he makes a mistake and he goes, oh, and then he'll start all over again. Right, right. You know, but he's, I know that he's always watching videos to learn something new or something different and, you know, there's hours where, you know, sometimes he's rehearsing and there's just literally like scabs from him just hitting, you know, the conga drum. Yeah. And, you know, he has Band-Aids on sometimes. And right. so by the time that he even, you know, goes to, to play, <coughs> he's hurt his hands so bad that sometimes they're swollen, you know, and he's on his on the stage just playing oh, yeah. ev- everything, Yoshi's you know, just giving everything. crazy trying to find a Some pads tape for you. Yeah. yeah, sometimes I'm playing. And the tech will take my drums off, and he goes, man, look at your drum. I'm like, what? It's all red, full right. of blood. Blood. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know, because I'm not feeling it. tears, man. I'm just, but it's like, it's like Tyson. You know, they, they train, right? T- so it's easy when you perform. Right. That's why Tyson could knock somebody out in one round. It's not 
that one moment. Mm. It's the months and years before that that Absolutely. he trained. Wow. So Good he's point. ready. Yeah. Great he's, point. You got to be mm-hmm. ready. Right. And, and still to this day. I, I was practicing today. This right. Morning. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you what's new? What's new? Uh, you know, I know we're in this covid thing right now and we're kind of all chilling and, <coughs> you know, um, but I mean, are you able to uh, you've been uh, you've been recording? I've seen that you've been recording with a lot of lo- like local cats, right? So yeah. You're working on your album also. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on my my solo project. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm going to have a elder bar said he'll sing on there. So nice. I got and I was his uh, musical director for a couple of shows and stuff. So right, right. I've known him for 30 years yeah. and, and Simon, worked with him. Simon, you you work with him too, right? Yeah, for sure. Simon. Yeah, Al is cool. That's my brother. So wow. whenever he's in town, he, he always says, Juan, if you see my name or billboard, it, you just you don't have to call You're me. on the gig. You're on the mm-hmm. gig. Just set that's up your drum. That's powerful. Drums. Yeah. So that's, I, that's what you call being connected and in, in Family right there. Family right. love. So I just go to his shows. I bring my congas, and he's like, man, I knew you was going to. I was hoping you were going to be here. I said, yeah. I'm here. Let's start. Yeah. <laughs> so That's what yeah. it's like, though. When mm-hmm. You know, I mean, like, we all we all got love, man, for, for people coming to the Bay Area, people from the Bay Area, out of the Bay Area, to the to the world. Right. You know? It's all love. When, when you were... When you were, I guess, on a big stage in a tour and you got to express just everything that you had, my question to you is, what do you feel when you play? Like when you absolutely are at pretty much almost like out of your body that you're not, you don't even know that an audience is there. Mm, so that happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what do you feel when you, when you play like that, when you're so in tune with your drums? Well, the, the hardest thing is, is, for one thing, you have to really be relaxed. You have to, that's mental. <clears throat> you know, sometimes, because we're going through stuff at home. You don't know what your wife, kids, mm-hmm. family, whatever. And you right. bring that to the stage. Yes, you do. It's mm-hmm. so hard to play when you mm-hmm. got this on your mind and stuff. So you have to, when you, the more you play, the more you know how to adjust and make it all, all the feelings, the right feelings come out and play so you have to just say, okay, this is a gig. It's work. Have fun. Play your best. So when it when it does come out, it's it's perfect. It doesn't happen <laughs> all the time, but when it does, it feels great. Right. Because there's no effort. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and you're playing stuff because you hear, you hear what you've been practicing and what you sound like for years. Yeah. But sometimes I play, and there's things that come out that I didn't even rehearse. Or didn't practice. That you never heard of before? Never heard it. Because I know what my hands can do. And right. I know the sound it makes. So sometimes I'm playing and I'm going, man, this is so cool. I get goosebumps. And I'm like, this feels wow. so good. Yeah. It's amazing. But it, you just don't know when it's going to happen. And you hope it will happen again. But, um, yeah, you just, it just, it could be thousands and thousands of people there or it can be at a little club mm. with 150 people and it'll happen right so you just don't know it's right the, it's the click of the band members right and the audience right and that what lock. And, and how you feel that day right right and if you rest it it helps if you rest a lot of water eat good take care of yourself it comes out that's important too because yeah. a lot of people <clears throat> don't talk about that it they think it's just good on stage and play there's right. a lot of physical uh, that go into because I know that you exercise all the time. Yeah, right? I run, exercise, push ups, keep my arms strong. Right. Uh, my legs and, and give you endurance. Everything. Yeah, you, it Just takes different. a lot to play in congas. It's a lot of work. Yeah. It's a, you know, and being in the business all this time and you just keep going. It's like, you know, do you oh, ever yeah. do you ever see like I mean, there's no way like retirement is like not even not even an option, right? Well, not yet. I'm 61. I'm not 61. <laughs> he has but a long still, way to go. You've been playing for 40 something years, bro. Yeah, yeah 45, you feel, you 48. And you feel <laughs> like you're gonna go another 20 years? Like pops, what? He's 85 and he's still playing. I still can't playing. Even believe how he can stay on stage. I, I can't know. even stand up that long. Yeah, he he can go. Yeah, and and that's the thing. It's like so if you got those genes, you guys are gonna be mm-hmm. going to your 100. <laughs> right. <laughs> Have you? Because I know that one of your uh, not idols, but what of your people that you absolutely love is Giovanni. Love Giovanni. And I actually, when I was on the computer, I typed in who's the fastest 
bongo player in the world, and it came up Giovanni. Oh, yeah, of course. But you <clears throat> you played with him, you said? Or you got yeah, to? When, the thing is, when there's a place, it's called the NAM show. You know the yeah, NAM. every year. Every year in L.A. So all the great musicians come, and, you know, and, and one day I was, because I was meeting, the first time I went, I went with the family, of course, and Sheila was introducing me to all these people, you know, I never met, and, and I knew of a lot of them because I studied drummers and percussion players. So I saw Giovanni. I said, That's, I like stopped. Oh, yeah. You talking about tripping on somebody? That Giovanni. Because I knew yeah. that I remember your oh, face and your look. I just and stopped everything. and I said, That's Giovanni. And, and she lives right next to me. She goes, You want to meet him? I couldn't <laughs> even talk. I'm like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I met him. He hugged me, the nicest guy. Wow. Year later, we hooking up. I'm in his room. We're jamming on the table, me and Jim Vani, and I'm going, what is this? Like, <laughs> And he's showing me things, and wow. you know, and then he knew my name. Juan, every time he saw me from across the room, he'd say, Juan, Juan, nice. hey, Juan, Juanito. Yeah. And he'd give me a hug. And, let's go jam, let's go. I said, me? <laughs> like all these great percussion players. Right, and, right, right. Yeah, we became friends. So Man, stuff like amazing. that happens. Yeah, that's it's amazing. amazing. Yeah. But the thing is, you just got to keep going. Yeah. Like, don't say... Uh, it's get it's too hard, or I'm not getting calls, or I can't do it. I'm not gonna make it. If you do it for fun first, everything will come in place. Sure, but you have to be ready and prepared. Practice, and practice is not just playing on your set. You got to listen. Mm. Right. I, like I studied other drummers and, and the technique, and other all I listen to all type of music. Right, because I listen to how they record and how they use the drum for this song, this song. So all this knowledge comes in. So when I do get a call to go in a, a session, I go, oh, I remember this will work for that. It's, so if you're just practicing, you're getting better, and you don't have the knowledge what's going to be on the CD, they're not going to use you again because right. you only have one way of playing. Mm -hmm. That's right. not going to keep you working. Yeah, versatility. But also, also, too, you play trap drums. <clears throat> yeah. You play drums, you play... Congos, you play timbales, which some people don't know, right? I yeah. mean, and piano. I play piano. Yeah, you play piano. You you've actually written songs that you know for your new CD. Yeah, I wrote songs and stuff on on the piano. That's what you um, use to get your ideas out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, before it was just the conga, the rhythm. Right. But then it, a lot of people don't know I played trumpet for years. That's Whoa, right. I forgot. I didn't know I that. Forgot. Man, my, I got my trumpet, and I always wanted to play trumpet for some reason. <laughs> and crazy. in the third grade, my father brought me, bought me a trumpet. So I would play it every day. All day. It sounded like crap, of oh, course, man. in the beginning. <laughs> but then my Uncle Phil from the, the, the trio Escovito mm -hmm. Brothers, my Uncle Phil that played bass, lived across the, across the street from Miles and Pop's house. So he would come over because he knew how to read music. Pop's doesn't. Right. So he would help me read the mm. notes. That's how I learned how to read music wow. on trumpet. And I took a piano class at Laney College. So I learned how to play piano and learn the notes and all that, right? Right. So when I was playing trumpet, he was teaching me the notes. And I just would play. And then I was playing at, at the uh, McChesney and then Oakland High. I was playing uh, trumpet, lead trumpet. Wow. But then the drum kept calling me like when I broke into Pop's room. Right. <laughs> that drum kept saying, "Come to me." That's come just to your me. first yeah, love. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but I loved trumpet for years. Wow. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that, yeah. but yeah, but and then that made piano uh, a lot a easier. little easier because you yeah. already had the, <clears throat> the treble, learning the mm -hmm. treble clef, and yeah. all that. So that's like good. I have six pianos at the house. Yeah. I think every I, I think every drummer, you know, really should have a second instrument because oh, need to. Mm -hmm. it, you know, for me, it was like when I started messing around with keys, and again, watching your brother. Right. That's how I learned how to do it. I just watched him and then right. I got a sequencer and started doing what I saw him doing. Right. But and the thing is, like, when you look at this stuff, you you think, man, it's going to take years to learn. It's know, too complicated. I know. You think it at first. That's what stops a lot of musicians. Yep. Sit down first. Yeah. Just right. hit one Mess note. With it. Play with and it. then find the chord. Yeah. Next thing you know, you learn another chord. And exactly. it just starts coming together. Mm. Absolutely. But it takes time. That's the thing. Don't yeah. rush. And even though that's not your main instrument, keep doing it. Because it's an outlet. That's, sometimes it comes more than your main instrument. And then now you're on stage and you're playing piano. Right. I've seen uh, um, 
the drummer from the Tonys, uh, T- Timothy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That a drummer for the Tonys, one of the Tonys. Yeah. He's now playing with them, and he's playing keyboard. I wow. didn't even know he wow. played keyboard, and because he was playing both for years. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all of a sudden, you see musicians coming up. You think they're just, oh man, I didn't know you play that because that was his hobby at home. Right. And right. it's good to get away from that drum. Yeah. For me. True. Me too. I yeah. get tired of it. Yeah. Then I hear something quiet, the piano, yep. to soothe it's me. It's an outlet. Outlet, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And then I'll go on bass a little bit or get, get one of the horns on my wall, and nice. and it takes me somewhere else. Exactly. And now I'm getting more knowledge of now I'm hearing the horn because my, my focus now is on the horn part. Right. I'm away from the drum. Sure. So now I'm listening to the arrangements of right. horn and the piano, and it's a whole other outlook right. of, of I think music. It, I think it makes you a better <laughs> musician when you start messing around with notes. When you're right. a mm-hmm. professional right. or a drummer, um, and I found that it made me a better drummer. It made, made me realize my role from playing keys. Right. Yeah. And you give them now more freedom for them to express themselves. You're right. not just focused on your part. Exactly. So because you play a little bit of what they do, doing, right. right? So now you're looking at it through their eyes, too. Yeah. Right. And now it's you're, you're combining all that magic together instead of, there's percussion players or drummers I see. They just so worried about their beating and banging mm-hmm. and right, and grooving. Right. That's good, but think about the horns over right. here and the piano. Music, be musical. Go, yeah, take and then the you'll kick probably out. Understand it better if you do all the instruments. Yeah. Right, and, at home and let practicing. it breathe. Because then yeah. you're going, man. I I have, I want more piano on this part. But if you're a drummer, you th- some of them are like, oh, I want to be louder. I can get heard here. No, how about shutting up? Mm-hmm. <laughs> let right. the song breathe. Put yep. the piano in there. Let yep. the bass come Learn in. You play your part. Play your part. Play and sometimes part. don't play it. Get out of there. Right. <laughs> Let the song build by itself. Absolutely. Yeah. Good points, Warren. Great <laughs> points. Thank you. Um, so I have some, <clears throat> actually, uh, I posted on Facebook, Randy, that um, and Simon, that we were going to uh, ask have some questions asked by some of the fans of Warren. Oh, yeah. So For I sure. wanted to read them and see, you know, mm-hmm. what you were going to say so there's a couple questions from facebook um andrea gomez and she wanted to know how has the industry changed since you started playing um hmm, that's a hard question uh it always changes Um, that's true yeah it doesn't stop um if it stops for you that means you're not doing your job Mm. because the sound changes the musicians change depends who you're working with the business changes by record companies, uh, studio yeah. engineers. It's not just us playing. It's everybody around you who makes you sound good. Right. Like this place here, Simon is doing the mics, helping. Uh, Randy's helping. You're helping with bringing this together. Yeah. Right. So it's if, it's, if, it, if it isn't Randy and somebody else is sitting there, my interview is going to be different. Right. So it depends on who's there, who's working around you, who you're working with. Sure. So it doesn't change. It's it's always something new to learn. There's always stuff that you're going to say, wow, I didn't know about this. <laughs> and it's something new. And you have to be willing to sit there either to learn or to watch or be aware what your surroundings are. So because you never know what position you're going to end up being. You might right. start directing. Yeah, you might yeah. start That's true. learning how to be an engineer. But if you're stuck in that, just playing, a, oh, I'm a Kong player. <laughs> you know, you got to be an entertainer. Right. A, a Nowadays, musician. you got to be. You got to be. You got to be able to switch up the hats. Don't label yourself as one thing. Right. Because you could be way more than that. True. Absolutely. <clears throat> and then we have a question from Martine Roundtree. She said, uh, "What do you, what do you like to do when you're not performing? Practice." <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I love to swim. I love swimming, That's running. Right. Uh, he loves water, ocean, love it. everything. But, yeah, but now that the COVID-19 and all that, I, I spend more time outdoors by myself, hiking, walking. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, keep your mind open uh, because the stress and what's going on mm-hmm. right now yeah. is hard. Yeah. So there's a lot of people need, a, you know, see a therapist and this, don't know right. the feelings are coming out, different feelings. Yeah. So to me, it's just taking time to for yourself, 
and what's fun, like I said, hiking, swimming, running, being with the family and stuff. Is yeah, for ha- sure. Your animals, that's helpful, you know. Mm-hmm. Just staying open-minded and have fun. For okay, sure. and then last question from uh, Tanya, John- Tanya Johnson. She said, how was it, <laughs> how hard was it to play congas in those romance 1600 outfits? <laughs> Okay. That's a good question. <laughs> so since it wasn't the scrubs <laughs> anymore. Because I know that it was thousands of beads, right? And yeah. Those, some of them jackets I know were heavy. Uh, yes. Yeah. But the thing is, uh, okay, so at Prince Paisley Park Studio, he had a huge room, and I think he had like maybe 12 seam- seamstresses. Is that right? Seamstress, I think. Yeah. Who would, who would make all his outfits and Sheila's. So that we would go in there and this, you know, check out the material first and see. Luckily, we had a choice of color. Like, I loved gold back then. They used to call me Goldie because wow. <laughs> I used to wear a lot of gold. And then you had also the, the gold strip yeah, gold in strip. your hair. So there was the material that was gold, and I said, I like that. I want to wear that. So they made it for me. Those those outfits were back then 3500 a piece. That's right. Wow. So it was elastic, so it was comfortable. It actually stretched when right. you played. And then the shoulders, they gave me more room for me because playing congas. So they had, you know, the, the pads on them and stuff. But they gave me a little elastic down here so I could lift my arms and play wow. congas. That's smart. So they were actually real comfortable. So that that's a trip because a lot of musicians may play all their life and never be in that situation right, right. there. Right, right. And that, mm-hmm. that's, that, again, that's powerful, man. It, that must have been crazy walking in and all of a sudden, you ain't shopping for clothes. They're designing. They're designing right clothes on your for your body. That yes. had to be. It was I cool. Mean, so fun. I know. That's just. I mean, it like was I nice. Say, that's a rare. You rare felt thing. good. Yeah. It's It's like. It's like I guess maybe like a cop. You know, before they go out on their beat, they, when they put yeah. on that gear, right? They ready that's to do their become. job. Right. Yeah. You become a musician when you put on that. Thirty-five hundred dollar right, outfit, right. you know, you, and it's you all know gold. You're about ready to go, and wreck. I'm like, ooh, and somebody whipping my hair with the blonde streak. Right, I'm like, your hair, I'm makeup, ready. He's getting all, all the numbers, stuff. all the That's phone it. numbers. No, <laughs> man. So we have one last question for you. You ready? Yes. <laughs> um. So what? When you when you do, hopefully it'll be a long time from now. But when you do leave this earth. What do you want people to know you for? <laughs> Cut. <laughs> oh. It's okay. <laughs> Don't make me cry. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. The J. <laughs> wow. Because I know, ahead. well, Go I ahead. just it's know what, I, yeah, I know what I see my brother as, you know, and he just, he's, I mean, the way that, that it is for me is because, I don't uh I don't see him I guess as a musician. I don't see any of my family as musicians because we're we're so close. I mean yeah. <laughs> Juan and I have so much history that my sister and my other brother doesn't know about. Right. <laughs> my and brother you guys, and you guys have been kind of close to the Bay Area, like Yeah. You know. We've stayed in the Bay. But Wow! <laughs> Don't ask me that. Oh, I know, but it, no, that's a good one, yeah, brother. It is. I, I know, I know, man. That people because I gonna, thought about it. Nice. I know one thing, man. <laughs> yeah. I know one thing, man. Ever since you turned your life over to God, man, it's been it's been like just I've seen you just grow. You've gotten better as a musician. You've been like. <clears throat> Just all around, like way cool. Just like the vibe. I've always been cool. No, you, no, you. <laughs> but, but you know, you know, you. Yeah, my vibe changed. You, you, you yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And I know, man, that must have been heavy because, like, you're playing with Prince and Sheila, and you know, coming into town, it's it's hard. How do you how do you adjust when you get off tour, and everybody's like, you know, you know mm-hmm. these, you know, you got to go back into the local scene. How mm-hmm. do you? come off of that tour and that high and all those people catering to you to just being a regular cat again but he still has to answer my question no so oh, yeah for <laughs> sure i'm sorry no well you shouldn't have to really change if if you know who you are <clears throat> right <laughs> I know, <Jack>. uh, <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> because i want to know i mean i want to know what you want to leave behind what you want to what you want people, your 
kids to know about you before you leave and what do you want the people to know you know about you that i worked hard there you go (laughs) and he he does he does he's a an incredible person and (laughs) yeah that has worked really hard to like we said you know his hands bleed his you know and everything that's why music is just it's so important because you know every time we do talk about this and how music has literally pulled a lot of people from you know hurt from pain from you know even when they're happy but truly the greatest songs have been written out of pain you know and we can all relate to that yeah um so uh it's just so you will be known for that though cool and I'll even even right now, that's who he's gonna be known as. Yeah, but I'll but Juan's but but Juan is uh, like just like cool, you know. Like everybody yeah. knows Juan in the <laughs> area, and everybody's like, dude, it's just like you know, you see Juan is just like Juan, what's up? It's just like it's it's over. It's it's just you just know it's all good. Yeah. Well, and I like talking it. to people and being around people. Yeah. So Yeah. Yeah. So when when you're performing, getting off stage, you're still, you know should be humbled and you know you you know better than anybody else you're just doing your job right but but then you know you got <coughs> the cats that you know is don't they kind of have a vibe because they're they're local guys playing and then you come off the tour how's that like i mean do you feel a vibe or sometimes like through other people or well the thing you really notice is is that when you do like we did the grammy awards and stuff but as soon as you do something big like that and you're on TV, your friends, even your friends, start they treat you different. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm, I'm the same. Oh, like all the asking, to get, hook me up, bro. Get or, me on the or gig. the pit. It's more pictures. It's more. It's like we're just hanging out. You didn't care, but now you saw them on TV. You know your friends change, right? Or or they want you to buy you dinner all the time, <laughs> they, right? All they, of a sudden, you, you got the money. You got right? the money, which right. is I do have it. You know sometimes, but. <laughs> But you know you got to save it for a rainy day, right? Or, the, yeah. or the good ones that helped you along the way. Yeah, because there will there will be times when there's no work. Sure. I don't care how hard you you hustle or try. Mm-hmm. Right. There's just no work. Like right. right now, things are slowing down. But I'm getting a lot of calls for sessions. Nice. I'm doing a lot of recordings. Yeah. But when when I first got my first call, when the pandemic hit, is I said I'm not going in the studio. I don't know. Right. You know, if you touch a mic, you don't catch it. Yeah, they had a stripping at first. Oh, so true. I yeah. said, man, and at first, so my first call was going to somebody's house, and I said, when I come in, I want you to have a mask on. I want to see you cleaning everything right. in the studio before so I go true. in. So yeah. when I came in, he had two people on there cleaning, scrubbing, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, it smell like Lysol. I'm gonna come <laughs> in. Right, right. <laughs> so good. then I started recording, and then I I came back and did it again. And then I started, now I'm doing more uh, CDs and stuff. So I've done like six CDs. I got called for two more, three more albums by next week. Wow. So I'm getting a lot of work right now in the good sessions. Deal. That's yeah. good. Now you doing some, uh, you doing some uh, like uh, <clears throat> tracking for people and then sending the file to? No, I actually go in. I prefer to go in the studio. Right, yeah. So well, it could be a one-on-one. For sure. See, see what they want, what they yeah. need. And I bring all my toys and stuff because... Yeah. You could you have to look at people and see if they really like what you're doing because some might say oh it's okay mm-hmm. or that's fine yeah but then you leave and you don't want to feel like you left them hanging yeah right. and they go God that's not what I want yeah and it's, sometimes it shows because when the CD come out you're going what happened to that part <laughs> I know what I played well, wow. how come it's not in there right it's, either it's he different. didn't like it or it didn't work or I didn't give him enough options of percussion stuff to play with so that's on me. Mm. So I have to make sure, you know, I do my right. part. So you like to play be right there in the studio. Cover everything, look at their face, and you're satisfied, you're good. good. Right. Yeah, because yeah. I want to be called back, and I want to make sure they're happy. They, they're they paying me to do a job, so you got to, you know, do it right. Right. Good stuff, Juan. Yeah. So thank you well, so much for being here. It was an honor for all of us, Simon yeah. and Randy and myself, yeah. of course. And we just thank you so much for being on Bay yeah, Legends. Man. And well. thank you for being the on The rating's going to go up now. The rating's going <laughs> to go. The ratings are going to go. The They're going to shoot. The are going to go crazy. <laughs> yes. Damn. Well, Let's give it up. That's a wrap. Woo. Bay Legends.
Stay legend. With the J. Yes, sir.